Hey there everyone, Foxy Fern here, and welcome to 5 things I wish I knew before using the graph editor in Maya. These tips can help you work faster and more efficiently by using some simple built-in tools and hotkeys you may not have known about before. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button. You likely noticed the yellow time bar the first time you opened the graph editor. It's pretty intuitive in that you can click and drag on the number at the top to change what frame you're on. It can be a little annoying sometimes that you have to click precisely in the vertical area to do this. Well, one thing I wish I had known sooner is what pressing and holding down K does. This makes it so you can click and drag from anywhere at all in your graph editor to get this result. It's a very simple yet effective technique that can shave off time in the long run. Shift E and Shift W allow you to key all rotations or translations, but sometimes you only want to key on one axis. You could go over to your channel box and do the old right click key selected, but a faster and more intuitive way is by using the hotkey I. Select the curve you want to affect and then hold down I while clicking on the desired place in your graph editor. It will save the key exactly as it appears at that moment. This is useful for when you want to have fine control over how your curves are behaving. It can also allow you to place a key during a pre-infinity or post-infinity portion. That brings us to our next tip. Say you're working on an animation that you want to loop seamlessly. By setting your timeline to the cycle range, you can see it working. However, the minute you want to shift those keys around, you're going to lose your nice cycle. It can be a real headache to try and key it appropriately. An easy way to fix this is by turning on your pre-infinity or post-infinity cycles. The graph editor gives you a preview of what the curve is doing, even though it technically won't have keys on it. There are several different options you can experiment with, but I tend to stick with two main ones. By setting your curves to cycle, the data will repeat exactly the same. Your animation will appear to pop if the values of the first and last frames are not identical. If you choose cycle with offset, this will cause the curves to repeat based off of the last key. Most of the time, you'll probably use cycle. In the case of a character moving forward at a constant speed, cycle with offset can come in handy. Sometimes you might be working on an animation that has symmetry, such as a walk cycle. You can save time by copying and pasting keys from one control to another. There are two main settings I use for pasting, merge or insert. If you use merge, this will plop the keys right on top of the existing curve. If you choose insert, it will push the existing keys to after where your pasted keys go. These are both based on wherever your current time is, but you can also choose to offset them by a value. Checking the connect box will paste the keys additively. Unchecking this box will paste them at their absolute value. When using the copy and paste hotkeys, make sure your cursor is hovering over the graph editor. Otherwise, Maya will try to copy and paste the controls themselves. You can't undo this, so you'll either have to delete what you pasted or open an earlier file. Maybe when you're making adjustments to your animation, you're not 100% sure it's going to be what you want. You'd like to give it a try, but you want to compare what it was previously to make sure you like the changes without hitting the undo key a bazillion times. Well, one tool I certainly wish I had known about sooner is the Buffer Curve Snapshot. What this will do is save a snapshot of your curves and you can modify them to your heart's content. Then you can compare your new work versus the old by toggling the Swap Buffer Curve button. When you have a result you like, you can override the old one by clicking Buffer Curve Snapshot again. So there you have it, five useful things about the graph editor that I definitely did not know about soon enough. These tips, among others, have cumulatively saved me hours of time. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be sure to share more useful tips in the future. Feel free to ask any specific questions in the comments or give suggestions for future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay foxy.